Hello everyone, this is Ingame Art with another boxing and the offline product game review. This is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Legendary Edition for the PlayStation 5. The jump right into it, this physical copy here is just the base vanilla version of the game, so the on this version is 1.0. Now, sadly, there was an update available. This update size was 10.7 gigabytes big and will take you to version 1.010.010 since the time I get this video. Now, like always, I play all my games completely offline with an unregistered account, and I didn't experience any massive game-breaking bugs or issues. And as well, I was still unlocking trophies with my unregistered account, which is extremely nice to see. And as well, I did platinum the game, which is cool to go ahead and just finish the game off completely. Now, if you've noticed, this is a Legendary Edition, and this is only available in the PAL region. Now, there is nothing new added to this physical copy. Everything was put on the redeem code, and it's just a reprint and resell of the first vanilla version of the game, which is extremely disappointing and frustrating to see, because this was a great opportunity to have at least a more updated, a more pristine version of the game. Even if they didn't put the DLC on the disc and it was a redeem code, they could have at least updated the game to it to some extent. Very frustrating, but not too surprising. I kind of expected it when I ordered it, but I, mean, I had the original first version of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, but I never got around to playing it. And I bought like a used copy, so I didn't really, I didn't get, it wasn't very expensive when I got it. So I saw this and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. And this will be my first time to ever play Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So it is frustrating that it was not the most updated and of course have the DLC on a disc. But it's not too surprising because Bandai Namco is notoriously bad about not putting stuff on the disc. They are a big fan of the redeem codes and just reprinting a vanilla version of the games. Much like Square Inx and a, a particular a lot of other Japan companies. Not all of them, some of them are somewhat decent, but main Bandai Namco and Square Inx are some of the worst of the bunch. Now if you've, I mean, that's pretty much the information you're going to want to know about this Legendary Edition. Everything else on beyond this point is just my experience with the game. This, like I said, this is the first time I've played Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. And though I didn't experience any massive game-breaking bugs, I did rather enjoy the experience. The game isn't flawless and there is some issues. The best way I can qual qualify Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is decent. The only real issues I really had was in terms of there was some slight FPS drop drops. Now this was being all played on performance mode. Like what if a lot of explosions, a lot of effects were going on, there were some minor FPS drops in certain scenarios. As well as that I did have a moment where there's a you can use your team partners to help you do an attack. I was playing Team Gohan and I was attacking some robot regular NPC enemy that you can battle for a random experience. When I did the team attack with Gohan the teenager, he would attack him, but none of his punches would connect, so he would, the enemy would not take any damage. That was the only real bug I came across with that character. I did try to experiment with, with other characters, and it didn't happen. It only happened with Teen Gohan. Other than that, there was no real other issues that I could really think of that were main that I could knowingly know it was a bug. But I do want to point out that this PS5 version of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot did come out later compared to the PS4 version. Main. So the game probably has a few of the updates and fixes and tweaks on disc compared to the PS4 version. I don't know the PS4 version, I don't know what that one's like, I can only speak of this PS5 version. For the most part, the game worked and played generally smooth from beginning to end was extremely nice. Now, I am not the biggest fan of Dragon Ball Z. I, mean, I, I, I do appreciate it. I kind of like Star Wars and like Minecraft. Not the biggest fan, but I do respect what it kickstarted and what it inspired other people to create. But I do want to point some annoyances about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. First off, the game has notoriously boring and just frankly unfun side quests. They're just... There is filler and nothing more, and it's just, I got to the point where I wasn't even reading the side quests anymore. I was just skipping all the side quests because it was always going to be one of the two things. Go fight this particular enemy or gather resources and come back. I just I didn't care what anyone had to say. I knew what the outcome was going to be. There was some awkward sound moments in the game. I don't think this was a bug, but there was a few times, like example, where when Goku fights Nappa and he grabs Nappa, and throws Nappa in front of Vegeta. There's no sound effect or anything like that. He just threw it up front of him, and there was like no sound effect of him landing on the ground or anything. It just 
there were certain awkward moments and certain cutscenes and dialogue moments in the game. As well as that, it was kind of frustrating for... I don't know what the overall objective of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot was. I don't know if it was trying to be a fighting game, an uh, open world game, or an RPG, RPG game. Nothing that really felt fleshed out in any areas. The RPG is probably the worst part of the game. There's really no control of your character in terms of the character growth and experience leveling up and everything like that. You don't really feel like you have any control over this. The only thing that really felt like I had any control of in terms of RPG element was the community board. Where you build up certain characters and put them in certain tree sections to give yourself permanent bonus stats. Doing the little combinations and putting characters in specific areas and giving them uh, special items to increase their main Z fighter experience or their cooking experience or their adventure experience was the only RPG element I could really felt in the entire game. Next, I did have a Dragon Ball bug in the game where you gather up all the Dragon Balls and you can summon Shinron to make a wish. And every time you summon the, uh, Shinron to make your wish, you have to wait 20 minutes in game. You can't change the time on your console to try to trick the system. It has to be 20 minutes in your actual play time before you can use the Dragon Balls. Well, I did have a bug glitch where every single time I summoned Shinron, uh, right as I got done summoning and moved to a different location, the Dragon Balls were immediately ready for me to use. It was somewhat of a feature, if you will, because it allowed me to gather up a bunch of the Dragon Balls and get a bunch of the items and stuff like that. So that was kind of nice. It, was, it wasn't what it was supposed to happen. It was a bug, but I don't know, it didn't really affect my experience, it just made things a little faster for me. As well as that, um, there, I was surprised there is no photo mode in this game. This game could really use the photo mode because there were certain segments and like actions and stuff like that that would have been cool to like take a picture of and stuff like that, like using a power, using an action. So, highly disappointing, almost criminal that this game does not have a photo mode. Next, some of the cutscenes seem like a little stuttery. I don't know if it drops down to 30 frames per second, but other times it didn't look like it's 30 frames per second. It was very odd in some of the cutscenes where it just seemed like the frame rate did drop a little bit. I don't know if that was because I was playing in performance mode, and if I had it in quality mode, maybe... Well, no, that if it was in quality mode, it probably still would have been 30 frames, so I don't know. It just There was some frame rate dropping a little bit, or stutteriness in certain cutscene moments. Uh, the next one is kind of my little bit of a nitpick. Pointlessly high numbers. It got to the point where experience and doing attacks were just so ridiculously high numbered that it just didn't feel like any worth of my time. Like, like there's a point where I was like getting like over 300 million or 300,000 experience or whatever it was, and like doing like 50,000 damage per punch and everything like that. It just these super high numbers really, really just lost me really quickly in the game. I just, I don't know if I was a big fan. I've never been a fan of big numbers to begin with. I always like small numbers that mean a lot. Like you only have 100 hit points and you get hit with an 8 or a 10 or a 15. It's devastating. So, I, I don't know. The high numbers didn't really mean, mean much to me. It just seems like, like, yeah, big numbers. Other than that, some people might be a little confused near the at the end of the game where Dende is a child. I was confused on this, I looked this up, where apparently the creator, Akira Toriyama, forgot that Dende was actually supposed to be a teenager, or a, how do you say, an early adult, and he kind of forgot, so the creators of <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Kakarot stuck with what Akira Toriyama did, and made Dende a kid again. I just thought that was really weird. But I do want to point out some interesting good things about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot was that it was really fun to go through the story again. And it was kind of cool that they actually fixed some of the story elements in the game that were not, of course, not as authentic to the original game. There were some moments they cut out that I wasn't a fan of, but some of the dialogue or certain interactions I felt were done a little better in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot than the actual TV show. Now, I know that we're going over a bunch of stuff and everything like that, and I, like I said, I can't deny the fact I did enjoy myself, but this game, really, reality speaking, isn't that good. I mean, it does a great job of being a good fan service to people who are a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. They do a great job with that. But overall gameplay and certain elements could have been a lot more fleshed out. A lot of shoehorn shovelware, like the cooking mechanic, the driving the car around, the fishing mechanic, and hell, the baseball moment in the game. None of these little features really meant much, or the open world traver traversal aspects of the game really didn't mean much. Uh, I was more aggravated with all these little elements in the game that felt pointless, 
with resources they could have spent to improve into combat, maybe improving certain other months, expanding little cutscenes or making certain other moments a little better. It just felt like they had a lot of those features that didn't really mean anything in the game. And at the end of the day, I just really just cared about the story. That's all I really played with. So I did enjoy the game. I could actually see myself coming back to the game and enjoying the game again. But the game was extremely easy. Like, I, I S-ranked every match on normal difficulty. Maybe if I run through the game or play it on hard, I don't know. I don't know if it's worthy of that my time to play the game on hard. But, again, it's very interesting. It's a decent experience. But it was disappointing. Like, all the fights felt the same. Every enemy felt the same to me. I used almost every tactic. Especially if you get Vegeta and you get the Big Bang attack. That's basically the win button. Get Big Bang Attack and constantly spam Big Bang Attack. It's just your win button. It's just, there's some massive design flaws in this game. It didn't really bug me that you only have to do is push square, 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 square to do any attack. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm glad I didn't have to push all these random buttons to do stuff. But it, it does really feel like there could have been a little bit more polish in terms of the combat and where you didn't have to computer and or yourself could just keep spamming your powers to win, which is a little disappointing in that. I feel like I'm going on a rant. There's a lot of topics I want to talk about the game, but this already is pretty disappointing because it's the Legendary Edition and it didn't have any of the content on disc. And as well as that main... It's a kind of a semi-open world kind of game, so it kind of lost me in that area as well. But overall, I did enjoy the game. And you may not be interested in the Legendary Edition, don't recommend it, but you can definitely pick up the base vanilla version, especially on the PS5, and get it for fairly cheap currently right now, and still have a fully working, playable experience of the original series of the game, which is extremely nice and really cool to see. And frankly, I'd be perfectly honest, the missing out that the DLC stuff doesn't really bug me that much. It's frankly, because of man, I'm not interested in Dragon Ball Z Super, I don't I understand. I, I would go into a whole rant of how much I hate Dragon Ball Super. But anyway, the original series is all here, fully storied, all on compact on the disc. So even though this Legendary Edition is a bad product, it's still a bad product, look into the original first copy, like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I don't know what the PS4 or the Switch version is like on disc, but the PS5 version here played great, worked great, and I still enjoy what was here on disc. It's still disappointing and frustrating that Bandai Namco just reprinted and resold the game again, but I still recommend picking up the base vanilla version if you get the chance. So like always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll try to leave links down in the description if you're interested in copy, and I'll see you all in my next unboxing video. Bye! -bye.